Hi children, welcome back to the second episode of our program. In the first episode, you have learned about the major crops cultivated in this farm, like rubber, coconut, cashew, pepper, etc. In this episode, we are going to cover the rest of the crops cultivated in this farm. So, about this, Thomas sir will explain you. Please watch the program and enjoy. Thank you. Yarla Pam Yadarta Tel Stavina, the Irish Tolarity, Eduadula. He the Kendra government a guild or Stavina. Whom Anate USSR and the Sahai Tolayan, he Stavina, to be Rodam either. Either Eduadical Totang Englum, either Tandarti, Nalivere, Kendra government a guild, Ranji, Tandarti Nal April, Eduadu Mother, Kerala government, East Stavina, Kendra government in Muna, Gated Guild. This is a in Malayalam, we say kaung, some people say kamung, that uh, local dialects, the names changes. Anyway, it's a vast area. Uh, almost everywhere you can see is the main crop in Arlam farm. Uh, so you can see the product is ready to be harvested. Uh, it's a vast area you can see that it grows well. And it is also mainly exported to other states and all. People use this for, uh, you know, you must be, you might have heard about the people Murkuga in the Parai, Malayalatil. This is one variety, Arika nut. Friends, actually, in this Arlam farm, there are 14, it is divided into 14 sections, but now uh, 14 sections are not there because half of the area is given to the Adivasi, the tribal people here, and uh, now only around 1,500 hectares. So that 1,500 hectare is divided into eight blocks. So the eighth blocks in charge is with us. His name is Joseph. His name is Joseph. So he is the in charge of the eighth block. It, uh, one block means it will come around 600 acre. So he looks after this 600 acre and there are a number of labors under him. So he makes sure that uh, the things are going on well. Uh, next, uh, you can see another one more person. He wa uh, Sar was with us from morning onwards. That is, his name is Ause Pachar. He was working in this farm for last 40 years. Uh, still, I mean, he, he is working. Okay, last 40 years and still working. And uh, very uh, well experienced person. He was actually showing all this area. He knows each uh, nook and corner of this farm. So we had no problem because we are able to tell you about detail all because of this. The in charge, uh, Mr. Joseph, is going to tell you what are the important crops cultivated here. I have a block block Pradhanamaitolam. <laughs> Students, I would like to introduce you some mango plants, mango trees. And uh, there are varieties of mango trees here, different uh, varieties. Some are hybrid, some are ordinary type. 
So just behind me, beside me, you can see there is a, a variety of mango. Already the flower has come. Uh, it's almost time for uh, you know the blooming time started, and uh, they it's a vast area. Varieties of mango trees are there, and uh, this also they sell in Niriti. There is a supermarket. All these products are sold in the Niriti supermarket. We call tunnel. It's a supermarket. Name of the supermarket. So you can see there are vast areas. Some are very short. Some are very tall type. I'm sure you like mangoes, and I'm. You should uh, take time, and you should ask your parents to come and see all this. There are a number of things. Not only that, the variety that we see at home, but uh, there are different items, mangoes you can see here. In terms of rubber production, Arlam Farm has an area of about three three hundred forty five point eight seven hectares of rubber. That means nearly around uh, 800 to 900 acres of rubber cultivation is done in Arlam Farm. There are mainly three varieties of rubber mainly grown in uh, Arlam Farm. That is Nuti Anj, Nanuti Padimun and GT1. 105, that is 105, uh, 413 and GT1. These are the main. And uh, this rubber is not uh, made into sheet directly here. It is uh, the lattice is mixed with ammonia and taken directly to Kottayam district. There the processing is done. Now you are watching the processing unit of rubber uh, product. The milky color no, that, uh, that is collecting from the rubber tree is called a latex. And this latex here, there, there is no direct processing. This is actually uh, sending to Kotayam where the processing will be taken there. So you can see a lot of barrels. So daily collection will be stored in this barrel. There in the barrel there is some chemicals called ammonia that also will be applied. Then once this barrel is filled then it will be taken to Kotayam and there in the factory that will be processed to make the natural rubber. Students you can see beside me there are number of varieties of bamboo plants growing. Actually it is not uh, uh, grown alone. This is planted by the labors of this Arlam farm. There are varieties are there. If, uh, I can identify around eight to nine varieties here. Some are very fat, I mean uh, the bigger type. Some are very thin type, uh, used for varieties of purpose. Uh, some are used this for uh, making mats. Some used for uh, other furniture or uh, related works, handicrafts items. This is a variety of cashew nut plant. You normally see a green color, no? Now you look at this color is uh, totally reddish. And this is a particular variety. The seed, that cashew nut is so big also compared to the other one. And even the flowers, when the flowers come also, it will be the maroon color itself, just like it. So the exact name, I'm not sure, but uh, it's a little bit the right right type variety type only compared to the natural normal one size will be very short only not very tall it's almost uh, like this much height only it will grow so it's a very interesting thing to notice this color of the leaves you know normally the plants leaves will be green but you look at maroon color just like a flower plant you know? now i'll show you the flower which is coming, you know, this after two, uh, one or two months, then the nuts will be getting from here only. So the flower itself is also almost the same color like uh, the leaves. Students, you can, students, you can see uh, the right now what you see is passion fruit. Actually, it is a medicinal, it has got a medicinal value like uh, dengue fever and all people used to consume it. So there are a number of plants. It is mainly meant for commercial purpose. It's a hybrid type. 
I am going to introduce you another way of farming. You might have heard about greenhouse farming. So I am going to show you a better type uh, greenhouse farming. We are going to enter into that. Uh, even we are not allowed to wear the shoes or any sandal. We have to go barefoot. Okay, please follow me. So there is a door here. You need to open. Okay, this is always closed because greenhouse means uh, we don't keep anything open. So you can see here number of things. There are different creeps, uh, all vegetables. You can see here cauliflower, beans type and other crops. And uh, we call this system greenhouse farming. This is especially practiced in the cold areas um, where there is snowfall and uh, much dew and all. But here, of course, that problem is not there. Here it is mainly meant uh, so that the ba bacteria and the insects problem will not be there. In this system, no insect will be harming these plants. The plants will be very healthy and uh, the yield will be very good. So it is much taken care. And see, that's why we even we don't wear the shoes, not bacteria. See here, another creeper. We call that is cucumber. I'm sure you all have tasted this. So this is a hybrid type and uh, this is also part of this uh, greenhouse farming and as I told you this drip watering you can see here. The advantage of this drip watering is that uh, we don't need labels all the time at doing this job. There is a particular place where you need to turn the water supply and automatically 24 hours the water drop by drop the plants will be getting. So 24 all, but all the time you can see the topsoil is always wet, the plant gets sufficient water. So um, no need of all the time, no, you don't have to come and care it all the time. It automatically it will grow because it is getting sufficient nutrients as well as water uh, from the beginning. The nutrients especially they are using cow dung and all. And uh, the flowers you can see, so all this all started blooming. It's a fast growing variety, it doesn't take much time. Uh, students, now we can we are going to introduce you about the jackfruit saplings. There are many varieties are here. The first one that you see is the gumless. Uh, in Malayalam, we say arak illata. Uh, we say ten varika. The better high, uh, high high quality type are there. Uh, recently, you must be knowing that the jackfruit is getting much, uh, um, no importance because even the foreign the people are have high demand it has got a lot of medicinal value like even the uh, diabetes patients can use it and um, even Kerala governments the state fruit it comes in that category jackfruit so the first one then we have ah. That is the first one what I showed you is the ten varika, we call ten varika, uh, which is a uh, gumless. Mm. 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 What we are going to show you, the Kerala name is mutton varika, means the jackfruit will be in bigger in size, much bigger in size. Within three years, this sapling, this sapling will grow into a small tree and uh, fruits you can get after three years. We have to craft it. We have to craft it in the bush. 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 Students, you can see another variety of plankton. No? Uh, this is tissue culture very developed in the hybrid. Uh, this system started recently only. Students, you can see here the saplings of Goa plant. Goa, you might have heard about Pereka. Uh, these are all this variety. It grows very fast and even the fruits are bigger in size as well as it gives fruit within a short period, maybe around two to two. Uh, maximum one or two, one to one or two years, uh, the you know fruits you can get, and we get in large amount also. Students, you can see here. This is saplings of cocoa plant. 
Coco, what is Coco? I introduced you already. So the way they care, they give irrigation facility. And uh, you can see there are different varieties, even mango saplings are there. These are all hybrid type, uh, which gives fruits within a short period. I mean around two to three years. This all will give the fruits. I think you are enjoying the video. We have covered almost all part of uh, uh, Arlam farm. And you came to know about a variety of uh, plants which are grown here like uh, coconut, rubber, cashew nut and uh, even banana, then cocoa, arachnid, so and so. But that all we covered here and this all are very informative for you and you do. Now our next program will be on the other one, you see that. This will be entirely different from our lump farm. So more about that, Thomas sir will explain you. Thank you sir. So as Joseph sir told you, uh, we showed you today about all about agriculture activity, which you may not have been knowing so far. Many of the things may be new for you. And uh, maybe today is the first time you might have learned about all this. Anyway, um, there are many things to be learned. And I'm sure that once this corona problem is over, you will make sure that you will be physically uh, coming here and seeing all these places because it is worth watching. And as also sir said, uh, we completed a part of Arlam farm. Then in the next episode, we are going to take you to the other area of Arlam, that is the Arlam Wildlife Sanctuary. It is under Forest Department of Kerala. It is of 58 kilometer, 58 square kilometer. So that we will take you in the next episode. Thank you for watching our video. Thank you. Thank you.